click and 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 click 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 what who's this liar look at this he says they haven't started lol liar we did start we're talking about real life right now you see you've been distributed exposed strix fan nine liar <laughs> hey, you you can't you can't joke around like this when you respond to Farid. He gets very he gets very upset about that. And he's like, about what? Look, look what they're doing. They're just joking. They're making sounds. And oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> and here they are joking and having a good time. Having <laughs> fun is haram. We all know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Terrible. All right. So, how's everyone doing? Everyone, me, a, I'm, I'm doing good. The others don't really matter. Uh, yeah. See, you see that? See how the atheists are, ladies and gentlemen? They're all like this. <laughs> oh, right. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. So uh, we've got this interesting situation, AP. We do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, have you heard? That the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter from the time of Muhammad. Have you have you heard that one, AP? Absolutely, absolutely. So you've heard that. Yeah. That's strange. Um, I've heard that too. In fact, I can say I've heard that thousands and thousands and thousands of times from Muslims over the years. And I've heard of this as for lots of people, their main evidence for Islam. And they seem to be clinging desperately to that claim for many, many years. And the, the kind of the, there were two main turning points. One was Hatun showing up to Speaker's Corner with a bunch of different Qurans in Arabic and actually putting them in, opening them in, and putting them in the faces of Muslims and saying, is this, is this the word the same as that word? Uh, that was a major turning point. And then the other major, major turning point was the uh, infamous holes in the narrative interview with Sheikh Yasser Qadi. And since then, I still encounter it quite a bit from average Muslims, but the more educated Muslims don't seem to be saying this nearly as much anymore. In fact, they're starting to act like they're confused as to where we ever got that. It's interesting stuff. I mean, I've heard so many times throughout my life, the Quran has been perfectly preserved um, word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot. Uh, th there are no two uh, Qurans that are different from each other. Um, all every single Quran is exactly the same. There is nothing different. I mean, this is this is general, um, you know, folk uh, myths in the Muslim community about the Quran. Then they have been around forever. It's 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 not just uh, that something that was there from the very beginning has been perfectly preserved. It's also that there are no different Qurans at all. Of course, all of this is false it's nonsense yeah and i've got muslim apologetics books saying that this is a mir this is one of the miracles of islam that there's not a single letters difference between any two qurans anywhere in history or uh the the even tamer version but still false that we hear from used to hear from yasser qadi that there's no two qurans after the time of uthman that differ in even a single letter so that's been pretty standard claim until it was refuted, and now they're acting like, what are you talking about? We, I, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. They're, what? Of course we know about the different kirat, and the, of course we know about all this stuff. Yeah. Amazing stuff. So anyway, um, how, did we get, how did we get to Fareed? Oh, we, we got there by Sneeko. Yeah. Sneeko said there's only one Quran. We replied that there's not just one Quran. There are different Qurans. And then Fareed defends him, but he's acknowledging that there are, there are differences. But Fareed has a, his view is that they all somehow go back to Muhammad, I think. I think that's his, that's his view, but that's, uh, that's silly. But uh, yeah. should we, oh, go ahead. No, 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 just go ahead. Let's, let's, let's Should talk we go ahead it. and check this out? Matter of fact, just to set up the problem. <laughs> let's go ahead and check out a clip from, uh, from Muhammad Hijab. Oh, no. Hatun just posted this early, but I recall seeing these clips earlier, so I think they, they probably posted them on uh, one of the other channels earlier, and then Hatun just uh, just reposted it. But let's go ahead and check out Muhammad Hijab. The great destroyer of the Quran. 
My understanding yep. from the Islamic point of view yep. is that perfect preservation means there is no change in any of the Arabic uh, word, yep. or word, letter for letter. Good. Right? Where's the source for that? <laughs> Guys, did you catch that? He's saying, hey, my understanding, this is Chris from Speaker's Corner, he says, hey, my understanding is that the Islamic view is perfect word for word, letter for letter preservation. And then hijab, whoop, whoop, where's your source for that? Because they're, why? Because Chris is, Chris is trying to get hijab to say it because then Chris would have, would have annihilated him on that and pulled out two different Qurans, right? To expose the lie. Hijab knows that now. And so he can't agree to it. That's funny. This is extremely funny, but, <laughs> but watch that's, what they do. That's a very interesting reflex from Ahmed Hijab there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let's go on. Check this out. Hey, what is, what is this? What is he wearing, by the way? Is that one of those like furry, furry costume, like a bear costume or something? I don't know. It look, it looks very comfortable and very warm. To be honest, I want to wear that too right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Where's the source for that? And frankly, you know, the Quran has been preserved. We believe since the time of the Prophet till now, word for word, letter for letter, haraka or vowel sign for vowel sign. Perfect preservation means there is no change in any of the Arabic uh, word, yeah. or word, letter for letter. Good. Right. Where's the source for that? Muslim scholars. Who? Word for word, letter for letter, <laughs> haraka or vowel sign for vowel sign. But I'm not a scholar. La, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, isn't this amazing? This, this is what hijab has been claiming for years. And then when the lie is exposed, well, where are you getting that? Where are you getting that from? Well, yeah. I, I've never, I've never heard such a thing. Where have you heard that? <laughs> it's amazing stuff. <laughs> Zakir Naik is not a Muslim scholar. He's not a Muslim scholar. No, he's, not, he's, not an, an, he's not a scholar on this. He's not, not, not authority. Okay. okay. He's uh, not authority. Shabi Ali. Not authority. <laughs> so he, he's naming, he, he's, he's naming various, uh, various scholars, which I don't know why he named Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali acknowledges that there are different Kirat and so on. But uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, no, hold on. I'm just going to keep naming uh, scholars. You're going to go. No. Wait, what's up? So um, he's right. Zakir Naik is not a, is not technically um, an Islamic scholar since he doesn't have an education in the field. He's just a self-learned preacher. But I'm pretty sure Shabir Ali uh, actually has degrees, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah, he's Dr. Shabir Ali. Uh, in fact, he received his uh, bachelor's in religious studies from Laurentian University and his PhD thesis was on the exegesis of the Quran. What is he talking about? Mohammed Hijab, what, is, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's... Yeah, Interesting. we'll see. They're not, they're not an authority. So, they... <laughs> so nobody's an authority? <laughs> Who? These teachers are, mashallah, the most qualified teachers in Europe. How does preservation work? And in other words, how has the Quran been, been preserved? If it were the case that right now, at this moment, every single mushaf, meaning book or parchment wherein the book, the Quran was um, inscribed, was to disappear right now, overnight, in every single Muslim community, you will have exactly the same book with exactly the same letters, with exactly the same vowelings. You catch that? A AP, yeah. is, that, is that true or false? Uh, false. That's false. Not according to us. Even uh, Fareed, Fareed, who we're, we're about to look, uh, we're, we're about to uh, watch uh, Fareed's video. Fareed would acknowledge that this is false. Shabir Ali would acknowledge that this is false. Yasser Qadi, if you catch him when he's not lying, would acknowledge that this is false. He, this guy's saying every single, uh, every single Muslim community in the world, if every copy of the Quran were actually destroyed, then they would have to, you know, uh, replicate the Quran from memory, and they would all replicate exactly the same thing. They would all come out with exactly the same Quran. And that's false because they have differences in their recitations in different parts of the world. So this is this is false. This is Muhammad Hijab saying, ah, if you want to learn anything about the Quran, learn it from this guy. And this guy's a complete liar. But, but, but remember, what's this guy saying? Every single Quran in the world would be exactly the same uh, if you had to replicate, if Muslims had to replicate it, even from memory, it would be exactly the same because there's no differences anywhere. This is Muhammad Hijab saying, this is the guy who knows uh, uh, about the history of the Quran and promoting it. And yet, 
Just a couple years later, you ask Muhammad Ajab, hey, what about that perfect preservation of the Quran? What? Who says that? No one says that. Ha ha, what a liar. No, uh, all these scholars you're naming who, who say things like that, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not authorities. This is amazing stuff, man. Yeah. It, and, and, it, and it's like, I mean, just imagine, it, they can sit there and lie to you for decades, and as soon as the lie is exposed, they suddenly act like they've never, like, like they've never lied about that. This is awesome stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we even need to watch any more of this clip, but let's see. And be transcribed and be recited out loud amongst every single Muslim community worldwide. That's special. Perfect preservation means there is no change in any of the Arabic uh, word, yeah. or word, letter for letter. Good. Right? Where's the source for that? Muslim scholars. Who? Okay, One name. Look, look, hijab. I've never heard this before. I've never heard this before. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Huh, who, who told you that lie? Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> Not just you, the, the scholars you point to. This is amazing stuff. Uh, all right, so that's the job. That, that's kind of where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. We are, we are in a transitional period in dealing with Islam. For decades, they've been saying word for word, letter for letter, until that has been thoroughly exposed. And now they're acting like they never made that claim. They've always claimed, oh, yes, of course, there are differences, different uh, kirat and ahruf and so on. This is amazing stuff. I, that, that's a that's a clear lie there, right? Like right there on record. And yeah. there's supposed to be his, his scholar that he brings as an authority and asks. It's just wild. Uh, what can you say? Yeah, and it, 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 what's, what's amazing is there, there are just no consequences for it. Um, there are no consequences, right? Like it's, I don't know. I, I find this absolutely amazing. Like you, you'll have people, Oh, everyone, you, you Christians are the same. No, if, if William Lane Craig, suppose William Lane, suppose let's hypothetically suppose what William Lane Craig has been defending the Kalam cosmological argument for a long time. Suppose one day, uh, some brilliant philosopher exposes one of the premises as indisputably false. It's, a, it's got a false premise in it. And then suppose William Lane Craig comes out and says, uh, well, of course it's false. I've always known that's false. It, it would be like, wait, what? You've been defending that argument for years. And as soon as, as soon as it's exposed as wrong, you suddenly say, oh yes, you've always known that it's false. Because that's what we're, th this is where we're at right now in the world of Dawah. For years, perfect preservation right down to the letter. As soon as it's exposed, what are you talking about? We've always known that. <laughs> this is awesome stuff. It, it, it's so wild that um, even I mean, Yasser Qadi had this whole thing of trying to suppress this as much as possible because the public is not ready to face these facts and to talk about these facts. Uh, that, that's how problematic it was, really. Yeah. And, and uh, still is. Someone said, uh, just like politicians, yeah, you do see politicians do this all the time. Like you had, uh, you know, the defund the police politicians and so on like this. And then once that turned into a disaster in certain areas, then it was, no, we never said defund the police. It's our opponents who said defund the police and stuff. Yeah. So you have interesting stuff like that where uh, people can just walk out one day and say they said the exact opposite of what they said the day before. And if their followers are devout enough, they'll just say, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha ha, you're lying if you said he said that yesterday. Wait a minute, I've got video of him saying it yesterday. Liar, you you edited that, you doctored that video. You took it out of context. That's how they roll. This is amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so should we get into, so we're, uh, I made a video responding to Sneeko's claim that there's only one Quran, and I just showed clips of uh, Yasser Qadi and Shabir Ali talking about differences in the Quran. Then the entire point of that was just to get away from that claim that there's only one Quran perfectly preserved, letter for letter, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then Fareed made a live stream responding to my entire video. To I didn't, I only watched like the first half of it, but it looked like he was going through my entire video. And that's uh, that's he, actually, I, 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 yeah, I think I think he was. I think he was. I, I only I think I watched most of the video, and I think that's what he actually did. Which which by the way that. That's impressive to me that you actually, uh, we, we'll do that if we're dealing with like a 10 or 12 minute video or five minute video, or, you know, maybe up to like 15 or 16 minutes. Can't do it with an entire live stream. Um, because his video is like an hour and I don't know, 15 minutes long or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we can, uh, we can check out some of it and want to look at two, uh, two sections. One, he has a little section on versions where, um, he has an objection to calling the Quran, uh, different, uh, versions of the Quran versions. <laughs> don't call them versions 
let's 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 react to it <laughs> once we see i want my 72 versions <laughs> in paradise <Okay. laughs> i don't like the word versions it sounds too much like virgins and gets me excited <laughs> <laughs> all right you ready to check some of this out yes 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 let's do it let's see here we go Take Sneeko's claim that there's only one Quran. You know, what, you, you know a book has never been manipulated, and you know a book has no 30 different versions of it? The Quran. Stay consistent for 1,400 years. But the original text of the Quran has never been tampered with, has never been manipulated. And this is the one that you could always go to. It's the same. It's consistent. But uh, no, it's directly translated from the original Quran. There was no counsel for the, the Quran. Original. My point is that the Quran has, hasn't been manipulated by... There was no counsel for the Quran. Of course, Uthman had had all the other copies burned, but you know that's not a counsel. <laughs> so. it's, it's it's so funny. I mean, Sneeko is um, this is a clear example of Muslims just picking up um, you know popular phrases, popular uh, these these popular catchphrases for Islam without even studying them, understanding them, or anything. Of course, we all know that Sneeko has no idea what he's talking about when he talks about the preservation or the versions of the Quran. But um, he picked this up immediately as a popular line that Muslims uh, use, or Muslim apologists use. Look, this is the only book that has never been changed. It is uh, perfectly identical. It has always been the same. So he just goes there and says it without knowing a single thing about it. Why is this mm -hmm. how you have to propagate your religion it's just dumb <laughs> yeah and and notice they're all perfect everyone's perfectly happy when sneeko is running around saying one quran only one quran no differences in the quran and when we expose him it's for read to the rescue of course we know of course we know about these different quran <laughs> interesting stuff council it's been it was recited by muhammad peace be upon him and then that's exactly what the quran is and there's been it hasn't been tampered with it's, it's been consistent the whole time i'm just giving you a reason why i i believe in, in the Quran more because I can be certain that this hasn't been tampered and they, with. And there's one version of the Quran. Well, that's, by, by the way, notice, I can be certain that this hasn't been tampered with. Certain how? Oh, did you, did, oh. you inve did you do the slightest bit of investigation? No. I heard a Muslim say it, and that's how I'm certain. So... <laughs> Not even the... The greatest Muslim scholars can be certain of this. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they can claim to be, but not even the greatest Muslim scholars can be certain of this. Not even they can uh, come to you and actually uh, meet the challenge of proving this claim. But and then here is Sneeko, who learned Islam from, from uh, you know, from, from from YouTube, from his YouTube comment section, and he's making that claim. It's it's wild. Yeah. And then uh, uh, people still laughing about him saying that the the Council of Nicaea was a book of the Bible that was removed <laughs> and so on. So it's like. You're not dealing with the top scholar at the conference here when you're talking to uh, Sneeko. And, and really, that, that's not the issue, because, you know, to be fair, you, 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 could, you could be part of any group and not know a lot about, you know, what the group that you've joined. So the, the real focus here is where is he getting these claims? We know where he's getting these claims. The Dawah guys still make these claims if they're talking to someone who's completely ignorant. They don't make the claim anymore to someone who's going to expose them as liars, like you saw. Uh, Chris from Speaker's Corner was trying to get Muhammad Hijab to make his perfect preservation right down to the letter claim. Hijab knows better now. But yeah. for some re for some reason, when they're talking to, you know, potential converts and stuff, it's like, yes, did you know that there's only one Quran perfectly preserved letter for letter? Interesting stuff. It's it's still such a such a funny thing to bring up. Um, like if, if I asked uh, Sneeko, OK, why exactly is that a reason for you to believe in this religion? I really wonder what he would say, because I, it's, it's like. Okay, let's say let's say you are right, and let's say it has been perfectly preserved uh, from the very beginning, even since Muhammad. All right, so what? How does it make yeah. Islam true? Yeah, like as an example, suppose uh, so. There, there are no like original copies of, let's say, Plato's Republic or something like that. But imagine that people are digging around, uh, you know, in Athens tomorrow, and suddenly they find the original copy signed by Plato. Yeah. Would that make it the miraculous inspired word of God? Because, it, I mean, that would have been preserved a lot longer and a lot better than the Quran. What yeah. in the name of common sense would that have to do with whether it's it's from God? Yeah. And I, I have no idea. Exactly. All right. That's what they call Dawah in the Quran is, tr is trying to spread the truth. Like once you realize the truth, it's good to go and, and bring other people on board with the truth.
So the Quran was revealed to Muhammad, and it's been consistent ever since. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smooth sailing. Only one version of the Quran. Yeah, there's, there's a comment. Uh, <laughs> first of all, what's that? There's a comment by uh, Peter the Cow said, AP, Jesus loves you so much. Just look at Council of Nicaea, verse 39. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope, hopefully the well, I mean, he has to he has to get a he has to get a version of the Bible that still includes that that book <laughs> in order to read that verse. <laughs> Yeah. All right. First of all, we need to get into this. There's an issue with the usage of the term versions. There's a there's a there's a problem with the use of the word versions. And and it's interesting because Farid actually goes off less than I've seen other Muslims. I think I think I've seen Yasser Qadi go off. No, don't don't call it versions. Don't call it versions. Call it readings or this or that. Uh, but don't call it versions. And the reason is they've been complaining, ah, there are different Bible versions. They've been saying that for years. Um, and so they want to act like they're in this different category. And so you say different versions. And then uh, and then they don't want to they don't want to call it versions. But he doesn't flip out as much as certain other Muslims. He just he comes up with an explanation why not to call it versions. Well, yeah, let's, let's let's listen to the explanation. All right, here we go. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, we have uh, multiple Muslims have written and in, okay. in, uh, attributed to multiple different Qur'a being read in different um, qira'at. And um, the word versions implies that like the previous version is now obsolete. Uh, no, it, it can imply that if I say, uh, oh, you know, I came up with a new version of this car. That can imply that the, the old is obsolete, but n no. That's Who the, made you, this rule? Who made this? If, if I say... Um, a movie just came out, right? And you can download it. You can view it on, on Amazon, or you could just go to the store and buy it in DVD form. I would say, oh, I just bought it. Uh, I bought the DVD version of it. Does this mean that uh, that the content is completely different and that it is uh, better than the other versions that exist? Does it mean this is an improved version? No, that's not what that word means. Who made this rule up? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so I, I've got... a. Uh you've got like the English standard version of the Bible and the new international version of the Bible. Those are just, those are translations, right? Yeah. They're called versions. Why? Because they are, they are different translations. That's what a version is, right? Uh, they're, they're translating the same books of the Bible, but you, um, translators face certain issues. And this will be, you know, the same thing with the Quran. Let me give let me give an example. So th there's a there's a f maybe some of you French speakers might be familiar with this and be able to uh, correct me. But there's a phrase in French that translated literally is something like "I've got the cockroach," and it means I'm like depressed or or in a bad mood or something like that. But that they they say "I've got the cockroach." Now, if you were translating a book that was written in French. And one of the characters in the book said, I've got the cockroach. As a translator, you'd be faced with a, a uh, uh, little, you don't want to call it a dilemma, but you, you'd, have a, you'd have a choice of how to translate that. You could translate yeah. it literally. You could translate it into English as I've got the cockroach, in which case it wouldn't convey the same meaning because people wouldn't understand it. Or you would come up with the English equivalent, not of the direct translation, but what's, what's the meaning? So you might trans you could translate it in English as I've got the cockroach and maybe include a footnote on what this means in French. Or you could just translate it as I'm feeling down or something like that, which yeah. even though that's not a literal translation, that is uh, that's the meaning of it. So translators have to deal with with issues like this all the time. And and what you'll end up with is people tend to take certain approaches. In other words, if someone is favoring the meaning over the, the literal translation, well, they're probably going to do that quite frequently. And if someone favors a literal translation over just conveying the same meaning, they're probably going to stick with that for a while. And so you'd end up with English standard version, which is uh, it tends to be more literal and new international version, which tends to be more focused on on getting the meaning across. Even so, e even then, there's not there's not terribly there's not significant differences uh, between them. So um the point here is those are different versions. They call those different versions. You don't have to, but those are different versions. So what is your problem with calling different versions of the Quran 
different versions. No one's saying anything about obsolete. No one's saying, oh, the ESV makes the NIV obsolete or the NIV makes the ESV obsolete. No one's making that claim. Uh, but let's see if he adds anything else to this. Um, of course, we don't hold a view like that. We believe that the Quran is multimodal um, and it, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, recited the Quran um, in multiple dialects and he taught the Quran in multiple different modes. If they're all from the Prophet, peace be upon him, then there's no tampering going on. It's as simple as that. And I have multiple videos on the subject of um, the seven Ahruf, and I have multiple videos explaining the wisdom behind them and how it, uh, it created ease for the community. And for those that are interested in um, those videos, do check out my uh, playlist in defense of the Quran. All right. So let's carry on. So I, in I terms of him. David, what's up? I, oh, hang on, I, hang, on. I he, hang on. He's only got a few more seconds. Let me just so I can yeah, close so I can close him out. Let's see. I have an issue with the term adds anything. with with a Sneeko using the word versions. Um, I I agree with Sneeko. I, I'd never use the word versions because again, versions imply that like previous versions are are obsolete. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, let's carry on. It doesn't matter if you prefer to use it or not. It is, it is a completely valid. I I don't know if it was him. Who was that? Um, just recently, again with the whole uh, Sneeko issue, um, when we refer to the different Quran translations as versions, there was a similar objection that you cannot say this, uh, but you can. You actually can, and it's entirely valid. I could refer to Psych International, and uh, I don't know. Uh, picked hall or whatever it is as different versions in the Sahih International version, in the Yusuf Ali version, in this version and that version would be completely a, a valid use of the word version. This is just a very um, strange, not to me strange, I think a very typically Islamic um, anxiety over something as little as um, words where you are afraid of making a wrong judgment and angering Allah. It's just, it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, it's the Cambridge, this is a Cambridge dictionary version, <laughs> a part <laughs> version noun, a particular form of something that is slightly different from other forms of the same thing. No, so, no, 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 no. <laughs> so is the, is the, let's say Hoffs a particular form of something that is slightly different from other forms of the same thing, such as the wash. Is that is that what it is that the same thing? Yes, that's what the word version means. So we don't need any special uh, any special meaning, any special uniquely Islamic understanding of the word uh, version. Uh, you, you know what? <laughs> you know what it reminds me of. But don't call it a version, because because they're like this. With matter of fact, let me let me give an example. Ready? Let me pull up a. Let me pull up a passage here. I'm scared of calling it version. Call it anything but version. Call it, call it modes and readings and all this stuff. All right, okay, I'll just call it versions. How about that? So you guys can't make a can't make a ridiculous claim. All right, here we go. Uh, so this is Sahih al Bukhari, narrated Abdullah. The Prophet said, "It is a bad thing that some of you say I have forgotten such and such verse of the Quran, for indeed." He has been caused by Allah to forget it. So you must <laughs> so you must keep on reciting the Quran because it escapes from the hearts of men faster than camels do. Um, <laughs> faster than camels do. I know what he's talking about because other versions of the same hadith is like faster than a camel escapes from, uh, you know, if you, you untie a camel or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, notice. People complain, hey, I forgot part of the Quran. He says, no, 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 don't say that. You've been caused by Allah to forget it. But look at what he says. So keep on reciting the Quran because it'll escape from your heart. It's like, wait a minute. If Allah is the one making me forget it, <laughs> why would it be a problem if I forget it? You're telling me, make sure you make sure you recite it. Make sure you keep on reciting it. Keep on reciting it. Keep on reciting it. Why should I keep on reciting it? So, I, so you won't forget it. But wait a minute. I thought I'm caused by Allah to forget it if I forget it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I, the reason I wanted to bring that up, uh, let me go ahead and, and check out one more hadith. We're not we're not going to we're not going to look at a ton of sources, uh, but I just wanted to read two hadiths just to make the point of, of that we're making with this version. 
Here's a hadith. This is Sahih Muslim. We've talked about this many, many times. So this is Abu Musa, Abu Musa, Muhammad's companion, Abu Musa al-Ashari. Says he sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him and they were 300 in number. So these, this is the next generation. This is, after the, this is after the generation of the companions. So the reciters of Basra come to him. They recited the Quran and he said, you are the best among the inhabitants of Basra for you are the reciters among them. So continue to recite it. But bear in mind that your reciting for a long time may not harden your hearts as were hardened the hearts of those before you. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah Barat, Surah 9. I have, however, forgotten it. With the exception of this, which I remember out of it, if there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. Uh, AP, you ever seen that verse in the Quran? Uh, nope. I haven't either. What, you know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because it's not in the Quran. He's talking about a chapter. He says he's forgotten. And he says it contains this verse. That verse is not in the Quran. And he's talking about, so this is not some verse that he by himself forgot, but which the rest of the Muslim community remembers. They all forgot this chapter. And he says, and we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of Musabihat, and I have forgotten it, but I remember this much out of it. O oh, people who believe, why do you say that which you do not practice? And that is recorded in your necks as a witness, blah, 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 blah. So notice, this is Abu Musa warning, warning the next generation of reciters to recite the Quran and not to harden their hearts. And he says, as we're hardening the hearts of those before you, we used to recite this, this chapter of the Quran, which I remember a verse out of it. I remember a verse, but I can't remember the rest of this chapter. No one can. And I'm just thinking, if, if Farid overheard this conversation described in the Hadith, he would probably refer to that guy as a punk. Yeah, that like. punk. <laughs> that punk, that punk Abu Musa out here making it sound like they forgot a chapter of the Quran. Shame on him. He's an yeah. apostate. He'll, he's going to hell. <laughs> He's going to hell like Shabir Ali. I'm saying that because he, he excommunicates uh, Shabir. Yeah, we have to see that part. Is, is, he calls him a punk, right? Yeah, we'll he calls Shabir a punk. Yeah, he yeah. calls Shabir a punk. For, <laughs> but, but then he says he, he's telling the truth. Right? It's like, <laughs> it's wow, funny. this is funny. Um, so anyway, here's the point. Notice, uh, what do we mean by the word version? Well, we looked up what the word version means in English. And uh, they say, don't call, the, don't call the, the different versions of the Quran different versions, even though even if you're talking about translations, you could say, as AP pointed out, these are different versions. But even if you're talking about the different kirat used in different parts of the world, those would be exactly what we mean by the word versions, right? That's exactly what you mean when you're talking about versions. So in Islam, somehow it's just if you call it something different, then it's different. It's not the same thing, right? Like a, a, anyone else from any other religion or any, any other ideology, if they had an entire chapter that's supposed to be part of their book and everyone forgets it, you'd say, ha ha, your book has been, you, you've lost part of your book. In Islam, they just say, nope, it's been abrogated. Allah caused us to forget it. Allah caused us to forget it. So you see, it's not a problem if we forget it, because if we forget it, then Allah caused us to forget it. And therefore, uh, it's it's no problem at all. It's not the same thing. You know what this reminds you of? Look, Here, here's a, here's a, here's a marker. Watch this. I got to destroy a shirt to do this, but it's worth it. All right. So suppose I come up to everyone and I say, hey, you know who's stupid? Everyone, because everyone else has a stain on their shirt except me. And you say, what are you talking about, David? You've got a stain right there on your shirt, too. I say, no, no, no. Everyone else has a stain. I don't have a stain on my shirt. I say, David, what are you talking about? I see the stain right in front of me. It's right there on your shirt. And I say, no, 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 no. See, I call this a slub glop. I call that, I don't call this a stain. I call it a slub glop. So in your face, I don't have a stain. You all have stains on your shirt. I have no stain on my shirt. I just got a slub glop. You see, ha <laughs> ha, I'm superior to everyone else. That's what, that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's what they're doing. Everyone else has different versions of their books. Ha ha, they've got different translations and, and they have textual variants and so on. They have different versions. Ha ha, but not us. Like, okay, but you guys obviously have different versions right here. Oh, but we don't call them versions. 
I don't care what you call it. It's the same thing, right? You can call this whatever you want. It doesn't change what it is. Uh, if someone forgets something and you want to, you want to call it something else, let's say it's abrogated or something like that, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's the same concept. This is weird stuff. For some reason, they just think that hey, you're muted, dude. Why are you muted? Did you mute oh, yourself? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't he just use the, didn't he just say, um, I don't, I prefer not to use that word or I don't like to use that word. He said something like that, right? Which is, uh, which is very, very interesting. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. If you want to use it or not, that is just what it is. We can call it a version and we are not wrong. We are, we are no. correct in the, in the, in the most literal sense of the word, we could, we would be correct. <laughs> yeah. Funny. So anyway, guys, just calling something a different name. Here's, here's what's amazing. It's the Quran has all, all of the characteristics of a book that's been copied by hand by lots of people. Textual variants, missing passage. In fact, it has all of the characteristics, all of the features of a book that was transmitted orally by memory and then eventually written down mm -hmm. and not perfectly. It has all of those characteristics. They just call everything something different, right? So if they if they forget something, they'll say, oh, that was abrogated. If, if the entire Muslim community forgets an entire chapter or multiple chapters or hundreds of verses, they'll say, uh, oh, that was abrogated. So we've got a word for it. So that makes it a different thing. They'll have textual variants where one version of the Quran says one thing, one version of the Quran says something else. And they'll, they'll, they'll just explain this in terms of, you know, different modes. It's different modes. It's, okay. It's called a textual variant. That's what it's called. That's what we call yeah, it with yeah. every other book in the world. It's the exact same thing with the Quran. You just want to be in a different category so that you can claim everyone else is different. This is weird. It's even it's even uh, reasonable to believe that uh, that the whole idea, of course, this is what a lot of lots of people believe, um, that the whole idea that uh, the Quran was di revealed in different in different modes and different variations and different ahuv is something that was entirely um, made up after the fact that uh, that people somehow try to um, find an explanation as to how the Quran ended up being you know, different in its wordings, in, 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 in letter differences and things like that. So that whole narration, oh, the Quran was revealed in different, in seven different variations, that might be completely made up. Of course, we are in no position to trust the narrators of these hadiths. Yeah, I, and I, yeah, I think it's indisputably made up because the explanation is, is absurd in the extreme. It's Muhammad's uh, companions eventually come to him and say, this, this, this guy's reciting the Quran differently from the way I recite it. And then Muhammad has them both recite it and says, yeah, Allah revealed it in both these ways. You see, seven different ways. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute. I mean, I, I, if I recall correctly, we'd have to look it up. I think this is after the conquest of Mecca. And his followers are all shocked. Shocked, I say, that he's been revealing the Quran in all these different ways. And it's like, guys, wait a minute. So for, two, for, for, for almost two decades, Muhammad's been reciting the Quran. And then suddenly some of his followers are reciting it differently. And he says, oh, yeah, it's been revealed in all those different ways. It's like, wait a minute. Wouldn't wouldn't these guys know that? Wouldn't no. Yeah. You, you're telling me he's been revealing the Quran for 20 years and no one caught on to the fact that he's revealing it in all of these different ways until some of his followers eventually see it as a problem. And then, oh, yeah, it was revealed in all these different ways. And you only know about this from later hadiths, which where people are quite familiar with differences in the Quran, they're trying to explain them. And then, oh yeah, yeah, it was revealed in all these ways. Muhammad said so, and and and, and but we're insane if we if we don't take that seriously. And by the way, it's what, such a convenient excuse, of course, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's called that's called a, that's called an ad hoc ad hoc hy hypothesis. Um, but uh, no, and notice, I mean, supposedly Uthman does what he he burns everything to cover up all the all, all the variants and stuff. And so, I mean, they should have been the same after the time of Uthman. So Uthman somehow preserves. These uh, all these different way, all these different readings and different modes and so on. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of stretches, stretches the bounds of credulity here. You can only believe that this is um, that this is deliberate and uh, reasonable if you actually believe in Islam. Yeah, and if you're clinging to this position. And by the way, um, you you recall the the holes in the narrative interview, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, if I recall correctly, 
tell me if tell me if this is your recollection because I haven't watched it in a, a, a long time. We all use that phrase "holes in the narrative" to show that um, there are holes in the narrative of perfect preservation, mm-hmm. because that's that's the Muslim claim that we're dealing with most frequently. Only one Quran perfectly preserved, dot for dot, and so on. And so we're responding to that. We're using it to respond to that. But in context, in the video, he's actually saying something significantly more damaging because he, 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 he takes it for granted that there are differences in the, in the, in the, in the different kirat and so on. What he was explaining, what he was actually saying in that section on the holes in the narrative, which is what set people like Farid off, is he saying you can't actually explain the differences in terms of Ahruf and Kirat? It doesn't work. I have it in my memory. I never watched a full video, but I watched those uh, those those sections in the context. I, I, but as far as I remember, maybe we are both wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I don't know. This is how I have it in my in my mind. He was discussing um, how they how they came into existence and uh, what you learn in academia on the. Yeah, on on basically the the nature of the differences on the collection and how all all of this comes into existence. And he refers to that standard narrative and says the standard narrative has holes in it. So he's not just referring to the standard narrative as the claim that it has been perfectly preserved word for word. He refers to the whole nature of why and how this happened as the standard narrative and then says it has holes in it. That's Mm -hmm. how I remember it as well. So you can think of this as like levels or stages or something. So if you're if you're just an average Muslim, your leaders will tell your scholars, including Yasser Qadi, will tell you perfect preservation right down to the letter. That's the history of the Quran. Um, then eventually, if you become a student of knowledge, they'll tell you, of course, there are all these differences in the in the in different Qurans and so on. We have all these different versions. Just don't call them versions. And then if you say, wait a minute, how has the Quran been preserved? If there are all these differences. And the, sta- the standard narrative is, ah, well, you know, Muhammad said it was revealed in these, you know, different ahruf, and then there are the different kirat, and then there are this, and so that's how we explain it. And Yasser Qadi is acknowledging our the explanations that we will give, even at the scholarly level, don't actually work. These explanations yep. do not work. There are holes in the narrative. He says he's working on an explanation. He's trying to figure it out. But uh, I think this is what I think this is what eventually I mean, I think this is what gave rise to the entire discussion, because I think behind the scenes, Yasser Qadi was telling Muslims in, in chat rooms and stuff like that. Actually, that explanation doesn't work. That doesn't you know, you can't explain it in terms of dialect. You can't explain it in terms of this. It doesn't work. And then Fareed, who believes you can explain it in terms of, uh, you know, different, you know, different uh, off roof and kirat and so on. Uh, flipped out because now he Yasser Qadi would be denying the preservation of the Quran. I would say it's easy for for it to believe um, any explanation. The guy also uh, <laughs> accepts the explanation for the Quran saying it is Allah who holds the sky so it doesn't fall down on you. He exp- he he accepts the explanation that um, that uh, that gravity holds the atmosphere together. And this somehow is uh, perfectly in alignment with the Quran saying Allah is holding up the sky so it doesn't fall down on us. It makes no sense at all, but he accepts that as an explanation. So I'm not expecting very much here from Farid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and think about this. I mean, Yasser Qadi is literally the guy who wrote the book on the sciences of the Quran. And uh-huh. so think about this. He's saying after all his years of studying, guys, our normal explanations don't actually account for these differences. I've got to work on one that that does, but as of right now, so notice, fourteen centuries of Muslims trying to, you know, trying to uh, figure out what what the deal is with the Quran, and Yasser Qadi saying none of this works. It doesn't work, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And then Farid uh, realizing, oh well, then we can't even say the Quran's been preserved, if, if uh, not according to our meanings of these terms. Um, all right, so should we should we check out some of the. Uh, should we check yes. out Farid responding to again to his to his credit to his credit uh, he's he's playing what I say he's actually playing what I what I say so that that's cool and uh, before I forget Farid still open invitation I mean you sit there watching entire videos and, and talking about them matter of fact let me put it like this AP Farid Yasser Qadi's claim is that you should never talk about 
the different kirat and ahruf and how to account for textual variants and so on in public because it will destroy the confidence of Muslims. And he knows that the explanation, he doesn't think that the explanation actually works. You obviously think that the explanation works and that it's pretty easy to explain. Open invitation, open invitation. You can join us on this channel. You can bring someone, bring a, bring Sajid or someone else, bring your favorite Muslim scholar to explain to us how you account for the different textual variants using, uh, by appealing to different modes or whatever you want to say. Uh, you can explain that to, in fact, in fact, just to sweeten the deal here, just to sweeten the deal, you can explain, we'll obviously have some questions and objections along the way, but you can, but for the most part, we'll be trying to get you to give an explanation of how this works, how to make sense out of the, the perfect preservation of the Quran and how all of this goes back to Muhammad. Uh, you can explain all of that to us. And then at the end, at the end, I'll give you five in five uninterrupted minutes of dawah, uninterrupted. Well, not, well, you could say anything. You could give the, the, the uh, five minutes of any dawah you want. You could lie all you want, anything. I won't interrupt you. Um, so that, that's the invitation. Come here, uh, join us, explain it to us. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if we're sitting here saying, ha, this is ridiculous, and you can, you believe you can actually explain it to us, why, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you've got all these people. For, for years, Muslims have been saying perfect preservation right down to the letter, no variance. And then that's been exposed as a lie. And now you're saying, ah, but the Qirat and so on explains this. Okay, we don't see how it works. I, I do not believe your explanation actually works. Yasser Qadi doesn't believe your explanation actually works. So if you want to refute Yasser Qadi, it's very simple. Join us, explain all this for us. And, uh, if, you can, and if, you, if you can make sense of it, then what in the world? Why? We, we, we will stand refuted and corrected. Actually, you're saying this and you want to invite the guy, but um, he did, prior to this, uh, react to our, invita to our invitation that we, um, that we extended to him in a different, on a different stream. And he said something along the lines of, uh, I have too much self-respect to come on your channel. I have too much self-respect to come on a live stream with you or something like that. It, it, Wait, <laughs> so. but, but he'll, he'll sit there making dozens of video responses to us, but not. I know that, that that's the irony of it. He says, I have too much self-respect to come and discuss with you. And then he just sits there and makes hours and hours and hours of content just about us. It's funny. And, and AP, seriously, uh, w w doesn't that cause you to, if I were to, try and figure out why he doesn't want to join us. Is that the reason? Or is it at the end of the day, he doesn't think his, his explanations that actually stand up to the slightest bit of scrutiny. In other words, Hey, yeah. as long as I, as long as I'm talking to my fans on my channel, who won't question anything I say, then I can get away with this. But if I were to actually try to explain the Atruf and, and Kirat to people who don't already agree with me, I'm not going to be able to get very far. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't actually want to um, expose people to, the actual substance of of the arguments that he's trying to make and that we are making, he he feels insecure about that. I would say, which is why also he said to me in the past that he would uh, he would debate me, and then when I reminded him of it, he said that he has been advised not to share a platform with me because of the things I have done in the past or because of my disrespectful behavior. So he has concluded not to do it. And then he blocked me, which is very weird because when he initially said that he would debate me, uh, he already knew all the stuff that I was, <laughs> how disrespectful I was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Weird stuff. All right. Well, let's go through some of this. Um, this is actually, this is actually funny because he accidentally proves me right repeatedly. Yeah. And so this is going to be fun. All right. Let me get the clip up. Now, did Sneeko examine Qurans from around the world and discover that they're all identical? Of course he didn't. Dawagandists told him that there's only one Quran, and he believed them without bothering to investigate. So where did Sneeko hear that there's only one Quran? Well, he probably heard it from lots of Muslims because the myth of one Quran has been spreading for a few decades now. Yes, I said for a few decades. For most of Islamic history, Muslims understood that there were different Qurans. But eventually, Muslim scholars and Dawagandists realized that they could impress people by lying. 
Here's Sheikh Yasser Qadi telling a popular audience that since the time of Caliph Uthman, no two copies of the Quran have ever differed in even a single word or letter. So, uh, I want everyone to pay careful attention here because it takes, it takes Farid a long time to get his fans to even understand the words that Sheikh Yasser Qadi is saying. So y Yasser Qadi is going to, in the, in the longer clip, which I think Farid act eventually watches the clip just to show people that context is not changing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he breaks down. So, so Yasser Qadi is explaining the work that Uthman did to standardize the Quran. And then he claims that since the time of Uthman, the Caliph of the Caliph Uthman, since that time, you can't you can't find two copies that differ in even one word or one letter. Pay attention to what he says and see if that's what he's saying, because Farid's fans are going to. What about context? What about context? This is awesome stuff. Caliph Uthman standardized the copies of the Quran, and therefore, from his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. From the time of Uthman down to the present, there has never been two copies of the Quran that differ even in one word or one letter. That's the claim, right? That's what he just said, right? It's You know, it's weird. You know, it's weird, AP, because I play the clip several times. I play the clip several times. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. for the, the clips from him and Shabir. And while I'm making it, I'm like, gosh, should I keep playing this clip? <laughs> so that people so that people understand it am i playing this too much because it's like it's so obvious that he's contradicting himself but i'm like oh maybe someone's not going to get the point so i'll keep playing it and then he plays it and and they don't get it that is funny this is that awesome is funny. let's see perfect preservation right down to the letter welcome to fantasy land population 1.8 billion you right. just heard Sheikh Yasser Qadi in a video made for people like Sneeko, people who don't know anything about the history of the Quran, say that every copy of the Quran in the world today is completely identical to every other copy. You heard him say that, right? From his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. But now I'm confused because Sheikh Yasser Qadi definitely does not believe what he just said. How do I know that he doesn't believe what he just said? Because when he's speaking to people he calls students of knowledge, these are Muslims who are on the path to becoming scholars, he admits that there are different Qurans. In other words, if you were to compare two printed Qurans, you're going to see differences between them. But world-renowned Quran scholar Sneeko says you're wrong, Sheikh. <laughs> and this is something that many people are unaware of and many people have heard but are not fully familiar with, especially those who have been exposed to uh, some of our brothers who live in Algeria or Morocco or other North African countries. They recite the Quran in a slightly different way. They recite the Quran differently? Are you simply referring to a different voice or speaking style? Not just a voice or not just a, a, a speaking style, but also changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat. Different letters and words? Here I thought that no two copies of the Quran differed in even a single letter or word. Where did I get that idea? From his time up until our time, there has never <laughs> been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. Oh, that's just what Sheikh Yasser Qadi says to people like Sneeko. What does he say to students of knowledge again? In other words, if you were to compare two printed Qurans, you're going to see differences between them. Changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat. If you'd like to perform a fun experiment, line up a thousand <laughs> fans of Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Show them clips of him saying that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Then show them clips of him admitting that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. This then ask if they have any problem whatsoever with Sheikh Yasser Qadi saying completely different things to different audiences. <laughs> uh, guys, it, 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 am I crazy here? Or is that like as clear as, as clear as anything can possibly be?
that he's contradicting himself, that he's uh, that he's lying. Uh, I mean, he makes it very clear, right? He um, he says in the in the one clip that uh, no two Qurans are different since that time, uh, in 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 letter, and uh, in the in the other video, he clearly and explicitly says that there are differences, and he explicitly says not just in <laughs> in, in in sound or uh, you know recitation, it's 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 directly in 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 words or in letters in words, yeah. Yeah, so in one clip made for a popular audience since the time from the time of Uthman to now. So any any two copies ever from the time of Uthman to now, not one letter or word of difference between any two copies of the Quran. And then when he's talking to students of knowledge, hey, if you got two different Qurans, you'll see differences. Especially, and he even names the region. And by the way, notice because this not only contradicts what he said there, it contradicts the the Muhammad Hijab's scholar who, hey, you know, different Muslims in different parts of the world. If every copy of the Quran in the uh, in the entire world were destroyed, just from their memory, they would reproduce it, and it would be exactly letter for letter, word for word, the same everywhere. I was like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. what what about in Morocco where they're reciting the the Warsh Quran? It, would, would that be exactly exactly the same letter for letter? No, it's false. The guy knows it's false. Why are people like Yasser Qadi and all these other guys glad to lie about this? All right, so notice uh, AP. Uh, uh, here's what's hilarious, right? I say you can perform an experiment. You can line up. I was talking about Yasser Qadi's followers. Why this is so interesting is Fareed does it with his followers who can't stand Yasser Qadi, and they still don't see any problem with what he just said. This yeah. is interesting stuff. Ready to go for this? Here we go. Yes. They won't have any problem with this at all because scientists don't simply lie to their listeners. They also psychologically condition their- Oh my goodness. I didn't, I didn't remember I said all this. Guys, listen to what I'm saying. So Yasser Qadi clearly, clearly, indisputably was lying, right? He was saying perfect preservation right down to the letter no differences between any two Qurans. Then he's talking to students of knowledge, says something completely different. Yes, there are different versions of the Quran. There are different, uh, 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 whatever, well, whatever you want to call them, but th they have different words and different letters. And then I point out that the, the, these Dawah guys, they don't just lie. They condition their listeners to accept lies. They, they condition their, their followers to accept it when they lie and not to see a problem with it. And this is like, a very clear example of this, where the man is indisputably lying. I advocate a little test saying, hey, you could line up a bunch of these guys. You could line up a bunch of these Dawah fans and ask them if they see any problem with this. They'll say no. And then Fareed, in order to refute me, performs the experiment. <laughs> Let me back up, AP. I want to back up just because I want everyone to I want everyone to see exactly what I, what the challenge was. And uh, Fareed inviting his fans to uh, to prove me wrong and accidentally proving me right, and then spending the next 30 minutes trying to prove me wrong. All right, so here we go. They have any problem whatsoever with Sheikh oh, Yasser. Back up. All right. An experiment, line up a thousand fans of Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Show them clips of him saying that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Then show them clips of him admitting that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. Then ask if they have any problem whatsoever with Sheikh Yasser Qadi saying completely different things to different audiences. They won't have any problem with this at all because scientists don't simply lie to their listeners. They also psychologically condition their listeners to think that it's okay to lie for Dawah. Fascinating religion. All right, here's Fareed's refutation of me. Yeah, look, guys. Is uh, Yasser Qawli contradicting himself in both clips? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he just asked his audience. He just asked his audience, and they're responding. And by the way, it's actually funnier. You can go to the actual video, ladies and gentlemen. The link is in the description. You could go to his video. He got no. No, he's not contradicting himself. No. No, he's not contradicting himself. No. Nope, not contradicting himself. We got yes. Oh, someone said yes. Brave man. 
We got no. No. These people are probably proud. No. Probably nah. saying no. We got no. No. Oh, I I know the right answer. It's no. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah, you know you know it's fun. Like I said, uh, uh, you can go to the original. Watch it there because it's like no 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 yes no 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 yes no 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 in in other words it's he's showing that for the vast majority of his viewers again these are not Yasser Kadi fans these are these are Farid's fans Farid can't stand Yasser Kadi yeah um but uh so even Farid's fans people who can't stand Yasser Kadi they still don't see any problem with Yasser Kadi walking up to one group and saying. Perfect preservation right down to the letter. No variants ever in the entire, uh, since the time of Uthman. And, oh, yes, of course, in copies today, which are definitely since the time of Uthman, uh, you have all these differences. And they don't they don't see any problem with it. Why? Because exactly as I said, they've been conditioned not to see this and not to be able to recognize it. It actually takes Fareed a good while to get them to realize it. SubhanAllah, this is interesting. He's saying it's interesting. What? That, that I'm got, right? We got an I don't know. That I'm right? <laughs> yeah, Yasser Khavli just can't explain it without messing up. Um, we got hell no. I, I'm lying. They said, David, what is lying? I don't know. We got a guess yes. We got no. Nah. nah. <laughs> is that like precision? We got Dr. Yasser Khavli can't be trusted. Play it, folks. <laughs> no. He I'm looks really so sure disappointed. To do. Did you hear him? I don't know what I'm <laughs> supposed to do. <laughs> you guys casually just said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. David Wood said, you would, you, you, Yasser Khadi fans wouldn't have any problem with him saying completely contradictory things to different audiences in order to deceive them. Um, and then he asks them to refute me and uh, they all say, nope, David's completely right. We see no problem. It, it's kind of, it's funny that um, that he actually sits there and does this, uh, this test, this experiment immediately as you bring it up. Um, and, and I can't really figure out if he's genuinely curious, if you're right, if his audience will genuinely not understand it. Maybe he is, you know, or maybe he, he thinks, no, they will all, they will get it right. I mean, it's, it's quite clear. And then he is proven wrong, but, I, it's it's hard for me to understand what exactly he's thinking, but it's it's funny to see that he's that you are being proven right here. <laughs> so uh, the the answer for Reed is that I've been proven right about the psychological conditioning that takes place. Uh, to to be to to be fair, uh, for Reed, I'm not saying this is only the case for Muslims. Anyone who joins a group is going to be pressured by that group. To conform to certain certain ways of thinking. That this isn't even this isn't even about true or false. You could be in a group that encourages you to believe in true things and conditions you to accept those things and so on. So this isn't this isn't uh, blasting you. It is. It does seem to be an especially big problem, in that the the Dawagandis can just condition people to accept a lie, and even when the lie is completely exposed right in front of their faces, they they can't admit it. That's a problem. Yeah. All right. Clips. Guys, focus, huh? <laughs> He's telling focus. focus. How, 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 how are you not getting this, guys? <laughs> yeah, <we gotta> focus. <laughs> I want all you guys to, to, to give the same answer. <laughs> no matter what it is, I want there to be an agreement. He wants there to be an agreement. Notice it's like, it, this is so obvious there should be 100% agreement. And uh, wow. It, it looks bad when you guys disagree. <laughs> Uh, one more time. <laughs> look, look, the same reasoning as like Uthman. It looks bad when we disagree. So let's just burn all the evidence. You got <laughs> you got to burn all the burn all the comments there, uh, Farid. Clear up and many people viewers. have heard but are not fully familiar with, especially those who have been exposed to uh, some of our brothers who live in Algeria or Morocco or other North African countries. They recite the Quran in a slightly different way. They recite the Quran differently. Are you simply referring to a? different voice or speaking style not just a voice or not just a, a a speaking style but also changes in letters and 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 words and uh changes in letters changes in letters changes in, changes words, in, letters, changes in, changes in yeah. words changes in different harakat. letters and words here i thought that no two copies of the quran differed in even a single letter or word where did i get that idea 
from his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. Oh, that's just what Sheikh Yasser Qadi says to people like Sneeko. What does he say to students of knowledge again? In other I don't think this is the full clip of what he was explaining, though. <laughs> it's, the, it's the context defense. How do you have to have a, a, a context when the clip is so clear? What, what kind of context could possibly change what is being said here? It's funny. Ha, haven't, haven't we talked about this a bunch in recent live streams trying to explain, guys, yeah. explain that, guys, when you're saying someone has taken something out of context, it needs to change. The, the, it's only a criticism if you've changed the meaning. Right. If, yeah. if ripping something out of context, for instance, if you were to watch the entire Yasser Qadi video where he says, you know, since the time of Uthman, no two Qurans have differed even in a single letter. If you were to look at the at the entire video and then you see Yasser Qadi saying, you know, some Muslims lie, they'll say something like, oh, since the time of Uthman, there's there haven't been any two differences between any two manuscripts of the Quran. But that's a lot. And, and if, if, if that was the context of him saying someone else says this, but, but I'm not saying that, then uh -huh. you could rightfully accuse me of taking something out of context because that would massively it, change the meaning. He wouldn't be saying that. But he was indisputably saying this. And so, guys, I, I don't know what to do. It's harder to have a clearer contradiction than saying there is nothing of one sort, right? There is nothing... There's no two copies since the time of Uthman that are different in any way. That's a claim. That's yeah. that's very different from the claim. Yes, since the time of Uthman, there are lots of differences in different versions of the Quran. You, th th that that's a contradiction, ladies and gentlemen. That's not that's not. Oh, let's examine the context. It's like if I say there are no unicorns anywhere, and then I say, oh yeah, but there are unicorns. Okay, that's a contradiction. All right. Mafia you, Mishkila, you want to play the, you want us to, you want me to, we're, we're, not, we're not going to, we're not going to watch the entire clip. All right. Let's fast forward through this. I don't, I do not mind. But you anyone, guys tell me if you want anyone, me to put the full clip up. Anyone could watch it, but I don't want to sit here uh, and watch the, the entire clip. We got someone else. I think, I think he's cutting context. Okay. But Let, this, there it is. The context. Now defense. we have to dig up the full thing. So. Ah. <laughs> it's, it's good that he actually goes there and actually watches the whole video then. Just to yeah, show it to it. everyone. Yeah, so he shows it, and so guys, again, you can you can watch Yasser Qadi's video. You can watch uh, uh, Farid's video where he goes through all this. Um, but notice, I, I think he's going to get some consensus here later on, if I recall correctly. Um, it's going to be better than before. And yeah. what's that? It's going to be better than before. More people will agree with what is being said, but he will still have people who are doubting it. So let's see. So he's encouraging them. Gosh, this is long. He actually watches it. Let's see. Ever yeah, grateful yeah. for. And really, Muslims are very humble and very directly to the original. So time. the Caliph Uthman standardized the copies of the Quran. And therefore, from his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different, even in one letter or one word. And this is because of the farsightedness of the Caliph Uthman. I have. So they watched it. They watched it. <laughs> well, he's so confused, Farid. <laughs> oh, so I don't want anyone saying we need to see the context. Because <laughs> yeah. we just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. One sec. Let's go back to it. If you have no idea who Sneeko is, that idea. That are different even in one letter or one word. Oh, that's just what Sheikh Yasser Qadi says to people like Sneeko. What does he say to students of knowledge again? In other words, if you were to compare two printed Qurans, you're going to see differences between them. Changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat. Can't get any clearer, right, Farid? Why can't your followers get uh -huh. this? Is Yasa Qali contradicting himself? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, we have definitely a contradiction. Aha! Uh -huh. It only took them a while. <laughs> yeah. 
we have, it's, inc it's incredible what proper context can do. There's no contradiction in all these statements. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, what a he contradicted hero. himself. I mean, it's so explicit. Yeah. He says no difference yeah. in words, letters. And in the other clip, he, he explicitly says yeah. different different letters, different tariqa. I mean, it's it's yeah. very, Guys, very clear. Right? One clip, wow. no differences in words or letters. Other clip, yes, differences in words and letters. Wow. That wow. is the definition of a contradiction. Um, wow. But it's cool. I mean, it takes for Reed a while, and he has to go in, through the entire video and so on to get people to see it. But notice he changed some minds. The vast, incredibly vast majority of people were saying, uh, no, no problem. And now he's getting far more agreement simply by going through it. So it took him a while to see that, yes, David was completely correct. But uh, of course, look, now they're getting it. Now they're getting it. Daddy likes it. Daddy likes nothing changed than it did. Aha. <laughs> Clearly there is. Uh huh. Nice. Good job, Fareed, exposing the Dawa lies. He's not on about the Qira'at there. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're talking about. That person doesn't even... I, uh, that, that's a person who is trained now to say Qira'at as far yeah. as differences. I think we are arguing for his intention. Maybe that you see that. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe we're, we're assuming matters have to do with intention right now. Forget about intention. Is there a contradiction? What does it even mean? <laughs> yeah, I think... I think he he's in someone was in was saying maybe we're thinking in terms of is he intending to deceive or something like that and there oh. I, would, I would say indisputably right this is not keep keep in mind right you could have a a person who changes his mind eventually about a topic right and they're mm -hmm. like I mean you could go through my life the things I said when I was eighteen are very different from things I would say right now you say so if you took some of them. You say, oh, you contradicted yourself. Well, no, this I, I've changed my mind on certain things. So yeah. you could, in theory, have Yasser Qadi or some other Muslim saying, uh, yeah, perfect preservation right down to the letter. And then in a different context, uh, years later, after knowing more, changing their mind. That's not Yasser Qadi. The, that clip from the Why Islam campaign was long after Qadi wrote a book on the sciences of the Quran. He, he very, very familiar with uh, variants in the different kirat and so on. So you can only I, I think me that's a lie. Yeah. I think Farid even even uh, adds the remark later that uh, it cannot be that he's he's ignorant that he learned later or I th he makes a judgment there. Mm, let's see. The latter part is a contradiction. Letter part is a contradiction. Saying there's no differences in letters and there. I mean, same thing with the words though. First video is about different qiraat. Second video is about half of Quraysh. No, no it's not. <laughs> No, it's not. Someone defending him. Um, Guys, it doesn't matter what in the world you're talking about. If you say no two copies of the Quran since the time of Uthman differ in even one letter, that's false. You can't say, oh, he's referring to he, no two. He's referring to copies of the Quran. That's what he's okay. referring to. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure which is the first video and which is the second video. Um, let, let's say this video with a white background and the Huda video. The, the Huda video is the one where um, he's sitting down, not the one with the white background. Hurry up and say something for you. Wallahi, yes, the is not a Hujjah. Of course, he's not a Hujjah. That's, that's not the issue. We need more context. <laughs> just, <laughs> just answer, please. Yeah, just answer, Fareed. Come on. Say it, Fareed. White background video. It's about distortions or mistakes. No, it's not. <laughs> Look, he's trying to think if he can... He's trying to think if there's a way to so reconcile Yasser, So Yasser is saying there are no... Yeah, well, let, let's... Oh, Doesn't let's... work. Is he going to play this again? I really like that he's getting my point across so well. Letter or word. Where did I get that idea? From his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. Oh. He doesn't say anything about distortions or mistakes. <laughs> Thank you. He doesn't, he doesn't bring up distortions or mistakes. You know, I appreciate that Farid has a little bit of, um, a little bit of decency and honesty here to actually, on the stream, 
look through it multiple times and go back and check if he maybe got it got it wrong and then admit that that doesn't fix anything I, yeah but with, with no. other people you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that same thing yeah you know? yeah hats off to him i mean think about this he he i mean he's playing my entire video of what i'm saying mm-hmm. then he's he's performing my experiment that i i recommended Mm-hmm. He's seeing my my experiment completely confirms exactly what I said about how the how how his fans are conditioned, but then he like does an exercise in practical reasoning here and trying to get people to uh to to see where they've gone wrong, and at the same time he like he he knows he knows his his fans are missing something by not yeah, seeing yeah. by not seeing the contradiction but at the same time he's still listening saying maybe i'm missing something here maybe there is something i'm missing that that reconciles these and going through it so they watch the entire video and so on so i yeah hats off to him he's doing a he's doing a good job here yep, yep. play it so here's the reality folks here's the reality yes all these saying two different things you think okay <laughs> and i appreciate the husband Ooh. one and um, however, however, it seems like Yasser Khali's lying. Uh, what? That's just the reality. From my perspective, huh? Yasser Khali seems to be lying. Really? He could have used oh. any other word to um, get his point across. He could have said something like, um, the, Quran, the Quran has never been tampered with. The Quran doesn't have mistakes. He could say that. However, he said every single uh Mus'haf has the same dots. Preach it, brother Fareed. Hey, you know, you know what's you know what's what I find very funny here? Um when he reviewed my stuff in the past, uh people called me a liar and he said, No, no, I I don't believe that he is a liar. I don't think that he, he he's lying. He's he then said, I think he is ignorant. He doesn't know. I, that that's what that's how he was describing me. Of course, I am ignorant, but I don't lie. I'm not lying. I'm honest. But he but uh, Yasser Ghadi here, he's clearly lying. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making the contrast here, and it kind of seems very interesting. <laughs> this is good stuff here. Thank you for reading. It, 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 you know what? You know what really sucks though. It's like something that should take. 20 seconds ends up taking years because AP, how long, how many years have I been sharing those clips? I've been sharing those clips for at least a few years yeah. and it's always, nope, you're taking them out of context. You're taking them out of context. You're, ah, oh, there's some, there's some way of reconciling this and me saying, no, there's not, no, there's not, no, there's not. He was obviously just lying and it takes years before. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was lying. <laughs> in, in an ideal world, you would take Muslims and you would, um, you would stand in front of them and you would uh, do this experiment and you would show them uh, both of these clips and say, is he contradicting himself? Yes or no. And here he is, Farid, doing that for us. That's great. <laughs> Farid should title his video, David Wood and the Apostate Prophet are completely correct. <laughs> wow. Is that is that true? It's not true. And the second video, he's clear about what about the reality and he affirms the reality so those are two different things so just just to be clear on what he just said uh he, he's saying in in one video yasser Khadi says perfect preservation no no differences between any two qurans he says that's false and he says in the second video yasser Khadi talks about differences um in words and letters and so on between even printed qurans in different parts of the world and here farid says yes he's correct there and so it's good that so now we have Yasser Qadi admitting that there are different Qurans. We have Shabir Ali admitting that there are different Qurans and Farid admitting that there are different Qurans. And yet the vast majority of Muslims that we will run into will still say no differences between any two Qurans. So we've still got our the point is we've still got our work to cut out work cut out for us. Taib. Taib means fine by the so, way. Shall we carry so, on? Did yeah, he really say great. that? No. <laughs> yes. Look, did he really say that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. He's played it like 20 times. Yes, but he probably <laughs> lied, but I don't know if it was on purpose. Well, we could we, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Yasser Kali. We could we could assume and can we can we say it's Jed? Can we say it's a mistake? Can we say that he's ignorant? Nope. You can't. I don't think that we can say that Yasser Kali is ignorant. No. 
You could say he's ignorant about certain things, but textual variants? No, he's not ignorant of that. I think he used Sirat al Mubalagh. I think he's exaggerating. He's not exaggerating, man. How does it even make sense? He's not exaggerating. Oh, okay. So, white video. He's talking about personal copies having errors. Personal copies. No, he's not talking about. He said no to copies of the Quran since the time of Uthman. This personal is... copies. I mean, but do you see the gymnastics they're doing, trying to, yeah. trying to reconcile these? So they try to somehow save the guy. <laughs> he's not talking about personal copies. There's no indication that he's talking about personal copies. So we have a few folks here saying that, yes, it's a contradiction. And we have a few folks here saying that, no, it wasn't a contradiction. So Ali should have picked better <laughs> words. I, again, I don't think... This is funny. Oh, maybe he's just exaggerating. Maybe it's, you know, different. You know, he should pick different words. Guys, he lied. He knows there are differences. He knows there are textual variants. He knows there are copyist mistakes. He knows all of this. And he said the exact opposite of what reality is. Yeah, sir. Um, who's going to speak about this subject, who's prepared something, who's probably even reading off a teleprompter, is, you know, um, making mistakes with his word choice. I believe that um, he finds this issue, I believe that he finds the topic of the Qiraat to be uh, problematic for, like, the, the layman audience, and therefore he simply lied. That's why... Uh -huh. the, uh would you agree with that? Because everyone, Fareed just tried to offer his ex explanation of what's going on. Because other people are trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he misspoke. Fareed's pointing out there's no way there's no way that was miss that was him just accidentally misspeaking or something like that. Um, so Fareed is saying the real reason Sheikh Yasser Qadi and he he had Fareed has good evidence for this based on the Muhammad hijab holes in the narrative interview, Qadi kept saying, do not discuss this in front of, of in front of other people. Do not discuss this. This is bad. Do not discuss these kidat and so on. Don't discuss this stuff. So think about this. Yasser Qadi's real position, admittedly, according to him, not according to me, not according to Fareed, according to Yasser Qadi, his real position is, if you try to explain differences in different Qurans by appealing to the kirat and Ahruf and so on, it's just going to confuse people, and they're no longer going to believe in the preservation of the Quran. So keep your mouth shut about all of this. Okay. Shut up. Well, what? Well, what are what are what are what are you supposed to say to to Muslims then? Well, you see what he says to to what are you supposed to say Muslims at the popular level or to unbelievers? What are you supposed to say? Well, he he showed that in in the clip. You're supposed to say no differences anywhere. It, it's amazing. Um. So I I, I agree with Farid here. This dude, this dude's lying because he does not believe that average Muslims or non-Muslims can understand the reconciliation. Because notice, he doesn't actually believe that there is a way you can make sense of it. He believes he's 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 still trying to look for one, so he still thinks there 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 may be an explanation. He's still working on it, but he doesn't believe you can actually explain this to people. Um, and by the way, if Yasser Qali comes out and puts like some sort of clarification. And he says, no, I wasn't lying. I actually meant this. Um, Farid, you, you messed up in the context. If you go back to the video with the white background, um, you'll notice that I meant this, this, this. If he does that, I don't mind um, like uh, uh, admitting that I made a mistake. However, right now, from what I've seen, it looks bad for Yasser. It really looks like he's lying. Uh -huh. um, okay, so someone's saying... But what is the context of the second video? It doesn't matter what the context <laughs> what is of the second is, video because the second about? video is correct. He, what he's saying in the second video, uh, the video in which he's in Huda, is 100% correct. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, this is Fareed saying in the second. So first video, he's lying. Why is he lying? He's saying there's only one There's only one Quran perfectly preserved. Fareed says second video, he's telling the truth. Why? He acknowledges there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. This this is amazing stuff here, man. Yeah, um, but it's it's the first video, the one with the white background, where he's saying something that's simply untrue. Okay, untrue. But, and by the way, guys, here's the thing. Yeah. Um. If if we're if we're going to if, if we have to exp we, um, we call Christians out 
for ignoring good. the mistakes and the lies and the manipulations of their own people, right? But when one of our own lies, we let it go. Is, is I would like to say something about that here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that we call out Muslims for lying all the time for very clearly lying, not, not just, we don't just accuse them of lying, we catch their lies and call them out on that. And a lot of Muslim apologists, including Farid himself, just let it go and don't say anything about it. I mean, just an example, I actually recorded a video about this in response to what he said here. I need to edit and publish it. But um, just an example, um, Mohammed Hijab in his discussion with me, lied and lied and lied through his teeth. I mean, you have, you have seen the, <laughs> the final video that I made as a response to him a two hour long, long video, I think, the end of Mohammed Hijab, in which I mentioned so many of his lies, even lying clearly about apostasy laws, about what early Muslims believed and what evidence we have and so on. This guy didn't say a single thing in response to that. So when he said, when he claims that Muslims are not doing this, Muslims uh, call each other out if they are lying. That's just, that is a lie in and of itself. Sorry, I can't believe that um i don't buy it he's he's bring, he's being pretty people are noticing that he's being pretty legit right now though like yeah you know a, like, that's i mean he what's interesting about farid is he uh he's a person who likes to give people the benefit of the doubt right and uh not assume their intentions um i can admit that i mean that's what i that's what i know about him but here with with yasser Qadi, he's just there's just no way out he's like no he's lying it's just it's clear yeah and lots of people uh i don't know lots of people are uh saying hey it's you know good on him for for doing this because yeah. you know you, you you just you we just saw it you can play these clips of yasser Qadi indisputably contradicting himself and lying and the vast majority of people will not get it until hmm. until it gets broken down for them by one of their dais. <laughs> okay, let's go through the context. Let's watch the entire video. Let's go through all of this. And then they'll say, okay, yeah, he's contradicting himself. Um, and so it, it, the, the point is, guys, it should not be this difficult. It shouldn't be this difficult. If someone, ah, and I, I'll say, when not calling people out simply encourages them to lie. So when someone like Muhammad Hijab, Yasser Qadi, any of these guys, lies, lies again, lies, lies to cover up the lies, and all you do is cheer for them, no matter how much they lie, that just tells them they can get away with lying forever. And then what do you, what do you end up with? You end up with Sheikh Uthman, oh, I've been stabbed, and oh, they arrested him. It, it, you, just, you just think, I cannot be caught. I can't be caught for any of this, because my fans will always cheer for me, no matter what I do. And so, but you, you don't end up looking good for everyone else. Yeah. No, no, no. This is this is but, a major issue. The context. Yeah? Anyone who lies gets called out. It doesn't matter if they're a Muslim. Doesn't this matter one, if they're a this cop. one time, right, Farid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I and don't buy if that. If any of you have uh, uh, a solution to this, a proper way of reconciliation, I'm I'm open to listening. Me too. We always have to be fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, not just with Yasser Qadi, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a solution to decades of Da'is saying one Quran, no differences, no variants anywhere in the entire history of the Quran, or at least since the time of Uthman, with the fact that there are piles and piles and piles of differences between different Qurans. Uh, if you can figure out a reconciliation for that, be my guest. Until then, I can only conclude lying is pretty standard Dawah practice. Let's carry on. Good, 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 good. Finally. Can we get this, Shabir? I don't even know if he goes into Shabir now. We, we want to get to we want to get to the Shabir and then then we'll we'll wrap it up. Take your time for read. Listeners to think that it's okay to lie for Dawa. Fascinating religion. But Sheikh Yasser Qadi isn't the only Muslim scholar who admits that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. Here's Dr. Shabir Ali. And today, most Muslims read the Quran in a text uh, that uh, is referred to as the Egyptian edition uh, of 1924. Most Muslims. Yeah, and you should Shabir Ali is a punk. Okay? 
Shabir Ali is a punk. That's not a refutation for eight. <laughs> oh, boy. Guys, what Shabir said is absolutely correct. <laughs> saying, <laughs> saying he's a punk is not a refutation. <laughs> Shabir says, and, and keep keep in mind what you, you know what Shabir's doing. He knows now that Muslims who are interacting with non-Muslims online are going to find out that what they regard as this one Quran that goes all the way back to the time of Muhammad is actually the version that was foisted upon them uh, in the Muslim community, the 1924 Cairo edition. He knows they're going to encounter that. So he wants Muslims to hear it from him first so that they don't think, oh, wait, why did I only hear this from unbelievers? So he's trying to familiarize people with the terms and the reality. And then Fareed doesn't like it, apparently. When you say something dumb like this, we read the... the uh... Cairo edition of the Quran. Kalam. Who says this? Who says we read the 1924 Cairo edition? Well, you, you're making it sound like the Quran was written 100 years ago. <laughs> and now we're reading Qirat Hafs and Asim. Most people are reading Qirat Hafs and Asim, who passed away 1,300 uh, years ago. Let's go to the Cairo edition, 1924. Who are you speaking to, man? So he does. He doesn't want him to use those words because they could be confusing to public audiences. But they have a problem. I mean, with words. The words that the words that Shabrali uses are entirely acceptable, right? From from an objective point of view, but he just doesn't want him to to say that because that sounds like the Quran could have been changed and uh, you know written in a different form, and that's just not acceptable. That's why Shabrali is a punk. <laughs> yeah, and what what's I mean, what's amazing is. For years, for years, non-Muslims have been responding to this claim of one Quran saying, hey, the, the, the version you're using was actually one that was that was uh, popularized and foisted upon people. It's the 1924 Cairo edition. And then Shabir Ali just, you know, acknowledges it. And then shame on you. Shame on you. People are going to get the wrong idea. <laughs> Muslims read a particular Egyptian version from 1924? <laughs> Are you going like Egyptian version? <laughs> That's what happens. You, you, he's making it seem like the Quran was written 100 years ago. And by the way, Shabir Ali is not doing this on purpose. Shabir Ali is not doing this on purpose. It's not like he's trying to attack the Quran. It's just Shabir Ali is, is a punk. That's what it is. He's not lying. Shuf, shuf. He's not lying. Yeah, he's just yeah, a punk. Here, here's the thing, yeah, Adam. Shabir, I'm, I'm being very fair. I'm, I'm trying to be Gosh. as fair as I can. Just called I him a lying. I'm, I'm not saying Shabir Ali is a lie. a dog. But you're a punk when you refer to Qalat Hafsan Aslam as the Cairo 1924 edition. Who the hell does that? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just well, one, it, one question, it, David. What, I, I don't understand what that means. I don't understand what the difference here is. He says he's not doing this on purpose. He's not trying to attack. He's not lying. He's just a punk. What exactly yeah. does that mean? <laughs> no, he's he's entirely correct. And he's speaking truthfully. And no one can dispute what he's actually said. But he's a punk. <laughs> so don't believe his entirely truthful claim. <laughs> he shouldn't be using this, those words. He he's shouldn't be using words. This is, a, <laughs> this is a slub glop, not a stain. Use the correct words. Don't call it a stain. <laughs> don't call it a comeback. Been here for years. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, uh, he's acting. He, he thinks he's a smart cookie. You're trying to... You're trying to do that thing. You're trying to do that. Hey, 1924 Cairo edition. Yes, salam alaik. <laughs> this is <God>. awesome. <laughs> Guys, don't 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 lose. Don't miss the big picture of what's going on here. For years, they make one claim. It takes us forever to expose the lie, and then they get to the point where they're acknowledging that it, it's been a lie. I thought all Muslims of all times read exactly the same Quran. That's always what I've heard. Uh, but this is not the only text of the Quran that is read uh, throughout the world. Wait, there are different versions of the Quran even today? That's not what Sneeko says. Uh, in North Africa, there is a slightly different text uh, that is uh, based on a slightly different reading, uh, mostly corresponding to what we read in the rest of the world. Mostly. A different text? There is a slightly different text that mostly corresponds to what other Muslims read? 
mostly corresponding to what we read in the rest of the world. This isn't what Sneeko has been saying at all. Uh, and then, too, uh, in some parts of Africa, uh, there uh, is another reading of the another Quran one. and a matching manuscript that is uh, prevalent. And here, too, we find some slight variations. Still another version in other parts of Africa with more variations? And here, too, we find some slight variations. So Shabir, Shabir isn't saying anything uh, controversial. I, I, I agree. It's This is only... What Shabir is saying is only controversial if you've been fed a lie. Yeah. No, like, like no one, no one else would no, Like this wouldn't be an issue if they hadn't spent years lying. I wouldn't even consider, you know, th these kinds of variants as a problem for the idea that the Quran has been well preserved. Uh, yeah. It's, it's when you guys lie for years and say perfect preservation, no variants anywhere that it completely destroys it. Every, everything these guys are saying completely destroys the lie. There's something that is uh, that is important here, which Shabir Ali also mentions. So he clearly uh, mentions textual uh, variances that are like the, the content or the text is mostly identical, but there are differences in letters. And uh, Muslims, regular Muslims who don't know very much about this stuff, um, and even others, even non-Muslims, often um, don't listen to what is being precisely said and then think that there is only a difference in in, in reading only in di a difference in reciting it and they say it's just it's just Quran it's just um, a different way of reading it of reciting it of speaking it but that's not what's what it is it is uh, there are differences in letters right in uh, in our roof which which is a plural for for letter letter uh, there are differences in, in letters found in these different um, in these different versions of the Quran or these different copies of the Quran. So you can open um, the same page in two different Qurans and actually find that uh, that there are um, there are differences in very specific words and letters and signs. Mm -hmm. yep. And we are uh, we'll be checking out some of those differences uh, in the in the near future. But um, it, it, it's it's like there's a series of lies and you wonder what it takes for people to catch on to the lies, right? So the first lie is perfect preservation, no, no variance anywhere. And then, so you, your average Muslim goes around believing that his entire life. Eventually he runs into one of us or eventually runs into like a clip of Hatun with different Qurans. Mm -hmm. And then this guy goes, wait a minute, there are these different Qurans, huh? Let me go ask the same people who lied to me before. Hey, you said no, no variance. And then the response, ah, those, yeah, but those are just different dialects. So those don't count. And then so they run around, ah, it's just different dialects, ha ha, different dialects. And then, of course, they, uh, if they continue interacting, they eventually find out it's not different. Uh, it's not simply different dialects and so on. And then it's, ah, but it's it's the different kirat. And so it, it was revealed in all these different ways. And it's like, oh, OK, that's the new explanation. They keep changing their explanation. Um, and it's like, guys, how do you miss the fact that what they said to you all along was a lie? Mm -hmm. they, 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 I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what to do when they can't. I don't see a Not even free. Uh, yeah. Shabir so far hasn't lied about anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he just said Shabir hasn't lied about anything. <laughs> he's totally truthful, but he's a punk. He's a punk. <laughs> Why can't he lie like Yasser Kadi? Instead, he chooses <laughs> to be a punk. He's simply. <laughs> I don't get it. Yasser Qadi lies. Uh, Fareed condemns it for that. Shabir Ali tells the truth. Fareed condemns it for that. Doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter what you do. I find it funny how he approaches the two guys completely differently. With 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 Yasser Qadi, it's like okay, um, let's let's see what he's saying and what are his intentions. And uh, yeah, he is lying. I mean, that's what it sounds like. But uh, Ed with Shabir Ali is like Shabir Ali is a punk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. He's just affirming what the scholars have all said. What we've always known. Um, the problem here right now is not Shabir. <laughs> My goodness, l listen to what he's saying. Shabir Ali, right there, when he was saying that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. Farid just said, this is something we've always known. Mm -hmm. We've always known this. And Shabir, matter of fact, in, in, the, in that video, Shabir says that... You have Muslims who think otherwise, but scholars have always known about these variants. Yeah. And it's like, wait, everyone here, everyone here is saying, yeah, we've always known about these variants. Okay, 
then why weren't you saying that to people? Why were you lying? Why was this so common in Dawa? Very, very interesting stuff. The only my my only issue with Shabir so far is him saying Cairo 1924 because uh, that's what it's lying. called. He's not, he's not lying. The, the it will Cairo get worse. 1920. Uh, yeah, you could. I, I I'll I'll help you out here, Farid. You can say it will get that, worse. You can say Shabir had low hikma. He's a low. He was <laughs> he was low hikma. He was low hikma when he said 1924 Cairo edition because he could have he should have kept his mouth shut about that. Or is yeah. the half three citation? You just say half three citation. Don't say Cairo nineteen twenty four. But yeah, um, Shabir doesn't okay. lie. All right. Keep in mind, these are different Qurans that are still used in different parts of the world today. When we go to early manuscripts of the Quran, the problem becomes even more glaring. For instance, after describing the Sana manuscript, which contains tons of variants, mm -hmm. Shabir says this. Uh, this uh, cuts away at uh, the, the sense of complacency that many Muslims have gone around with thinking that, okay, you know, uh, everything has been preserved dot for dot, letter for letter, the way it was revealed to mm -hmm. the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with no variation or change whatsoever. So the Sanaa manuscript refutes the absurd claim that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. Uh, how does that work? How, how does it work? If you say perfectly preserved letter for letter, and we find a, a and no no two no two Qurans uh, have have ever differed even in a even in a single letter, then no, notice Yasser Qadi only said from the time of Uthman. So if the Sanaa manuscript is pre Uthmanic, that wouldn't present a problem for what Yasser Qadi said. But your average Muslim has believed perfect preservation right down to the letter from the time of Muhammad. So a single manuscript saying with a bunch of textual variants presents a problem for that. That's all Shabir said. He's just saying this this sense of complacency that Muslims have, that there's no sort of textual history to our book, and that there are actual variants and so on. We need to stop we need to stop spouting that nonsense. For Reed should agree completely with that. All all, yeah. all, Shabir, all Shabir was saying was hey if you believe if you've believed in this perfect preservation right down to the letter, the Sana manuscript refutes that. It 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 does. Pretty Go back. Easy. How does that? How the hell does that work? Oh, he doesn't get it. Uh, uh, this uh, cuts away at uh, the the sense of complacency that many Muslims have gone around with, thinking that okay, you know, uh, everything has been preserved dot for dot, letter for letter, the way it was revealed to mm -hmm. the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, with no variation or change whatsoever. So the sun now, okay, so so I don't know what Shabir is saying. I do. Yeah. <laughs> In regards to this, I, I'm, I don't know what he's saying. But I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. Shabir is pointing out tons of Muslims still believe word for word, letter for letter, perfect preservation from the time of Muhammad. And finding the Sanaa, you don't need the Sanaa manuscript. You can refute that just by looking at different Kirat and things like that, or or uh, various manuscripts, or uh, uh, passages in the Hadiths and so on that talk about variants. Um, you don't need any of that, but the Sanaa that that certainly helps yeah i haven't seen the context of this um if Play he's it. actually saying the quran is not preserved Play then it, <laughs> shabir is a kafir simple as that yeah whoa <laughs> <laughs> this is a very very serious thing in in islam it is an extremely serious thing he just did what is commonly and notoriously known as takfir, which means declaring that a fellow Muslim is a kafir, a, dis a, a disbeliever. This is an extremely harsh thing to do. This, I mean, this is a, I mean, this is amazing because, I mean, think about this. We just read it. I mean, we, we just read a hadith earlier from Abu Musa saying, hey, we forgot two entire chapters of the Quran. We don't have them anymore. We forgot them. And here... <laughs> Farid is saying, if you say the Quran has not been preserved, you're a kafir. <laughs> Dude, if you go through the Muslim sources, you've got Aisha talking about, you know, verses being eaten by a sheep. You've got Ubay ibn Kaab uh, talking about hundreds of verses coming up missing uh, from, from just from Surah 33 alone, because the people who had them memorized died in battle and so on. You've got the, the, the Muslim community takes it for granted that there were all these changes to the Quran, that passages were forgotten and so on. And Fareed saying, "Hey, if you don't think it's if you don't think it's been uh, preserved, then you're a kafir." Wow! There, there went the entire, 
<laughs> the entire community of Muhammad's companions. They're all in hell, according <laughs> to Farid. Thanks, Farid. <laughs> wow. Isn't this nuts? He's so, not so, only a punk, but also a kafir. So notice, it's like these extra requirements. So how does one become a Muslim? Ah, oh, you got to recite the Shahada, and then you got to pray five times a day, and you got to do all these things, and you have your beliefs and so on. And ah, but you have to believe in perfect preservation of the Quran. In addition, if you don't believe that, you're you're not a Muslim. Oh, okay. Well, well, there went the early generations of Muslim Muslims. They're all kafirs. They're kufar. The justification for that um, is um, any, any everybody who denies something that the Quran says is a disbeliever, is clear cut a kafir. And according to our school and our understanding and our scholars, the Quran clearly says that the, that the, that Allah will. Uh, perfectly preserve the Quran. So if you now as a scholar come out and uh, say that the Quran has not been perfectly preserved since the revelation, then you are a clear cut kafir because you're denying what Allah says. This is, that's the reasoning here. Yeah. And that's, uh, I would say that's insanely stupid reasoning because you'd have to be, you'd have to be uh, interpreting <laughs> yeah. Surah 15 verse nine as uh, talking about perfect preservation when even, even, in, even in the same, in the same chapter, I think verse 90 verses 90 to 91, they talk about people shredding the Quran. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't think that me, I don't think that's referring to corruption of the Quran, but you could, you could interpret it that way if you wanted. But notice, according to what Farid, Farid is saying right here, you have way more passages affirming the preservation of, of the Jewish and Christian scriptures in the Quran that you have of Allah preser preserving the Quran. So if you can't, if you can't disagree, if you're a, if you're a kafir for rejecting something Allah says in the Quran, well, guess what? Allah over and over and over again affirms the inspiration, preservation authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures. So any Muslim, so you could, we can lay it down right now, ladies and gentlemen, any Muslim who denies the perfect preservation of the Bible is a kafir. Thanks for reading. Um, however, I don't know what he's saying exactly. I do. If, uh, if he's referring to something about the the the, the uh, Sana'a manuscript, first of all, you can't rely on the Sana'a manuscript in order to uh, make claims about the preservation of the Quran, it being preserved, not being preserved. You can't rely on the Sana'a manuscript for that. And the reason is because the Sana'a manuscript conflicts with the hundreds of other manuscripts that conform to the Uthmanic Codex, to the Uthmanic Constantinople Skeleton. Okay? Um, ah, what was this? What is this? What is this? Someone just said... Shabir has been taken out of the fold of Islam because of... Blood just takfirred him on live TV. Yachi, I make takfir of someone, of anyone, who says the Quran is not preserved like I'm drinking water, Yachi. Oh, you think you think it's it's tough to make the fear? It's the easiest thing in the world, man. <laughs> easiest thing in the Across world. Across the saying. red lines, kufar, bro. In any wow. case, I'm not saying that that's what Shabir is saying, and um, it's something that we need to return to the context to see what's going on. In any case, um, all right. I think we're good. Uh, I guess he's going to be talking about the. Uh... Hey, are you muted? You're not muted, but I don't see any voice coming at you. Oh boy, I muted my microphone on the by mistake. Oh, I'm amateur and stuff. Amateur. Terrible, terrible. terrible. Uh, th there is a mainstream thought in, in Sunni Islam, which is um, a very, a very prominent one, actually, which is that nobody is should ever do takfir. No, no Muslim should ever uh, be able, be allowed, or uh, you know, permit themselves to do takfir upon a, another Muslim. And um, then Muslims come together and actually condemn and ostracize those who feel free to do takfir. And you even have this among these traditionalist Muslims who say uh, that no one should be in the position to do takfir, but they themselves do takfir upon uh, certain criteria, such as that somebody, um, like in this case, says something that is very, very clearly in contradiction with what the Quran says and, what, and with what the fundamental Islamic uh, beliefs are. And but but yeah, it, it is an extremely controversial thing because in the past, doing takfir, so declaring that Muslims are now disbelievers by something, that would mean um, you could basically go and kill them, and <laughs> that caused a lot of problems in, in Muslim history. And and just imagine it: if you're a Muslim and you've been raised all your life to believe in perfect letter for letter preservation 
if you've been taught all your life, perfect letter for letter pre, uh, preservation of the Quran, what do you do when you hear, oh, Shabir Ali said this or, or now keep in mind, Fareed knows that's not true. So that's not Fareed's position. But imagine being a Muslim who's been raised all your life, believing in letter for letter, perfect preservation. And then Fareed says, yeah, they're, they're different kirat and so on. They, they, they talk fear him. <laughs> Shame on you, <laughs> liar, lying, liar, you're supporting the Kufar. You're supporting the Kufar. Because that's uh, what you're saying for what you're saying now, Farid, is exactly what David and every AP and Hatoon and Jay Smith and all these people have been saying for years. So you're 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 an unbeliever. That's here's the thing. Saying. Um here's the issue. What what Farid says is so he acknowledges that there are differences between different Quran um versions, although he doesn't want to use the term the, the, the word version. He acknowledges that throughout history there have been different um forms in terms of letters and, and dots of the Quran, but that still does not change the fact that according to him, um, the Quran has been perfectly preserved because uh, because he counts, well, when he speaks of perfect preservation, he well, what he understands is the Quran was initially revealed in different modes, in different forms, and then from then on, the Quran has been perfectly preserved. Uh, but the claim that uh, that there are no Qurans today that are in any way different is still false, despite the fact that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. So that, that's his understanding. But now Shabir Ali comes in that clip and uh, and says that the, that the whole idea that the Quran has been perfectly preserved from the beginning, word for word, letter for letter, is wrong. That is completely unacceptable to Farid. That goes against everything he believes in. And that yeah, makes... Yeah. Is it his reasoning insane, by the way? He's saying, okay, we Uthman had all of the variant Qurans burned. He uh -huh. burned them all to cover up the differences. And an exception was the Sana'a Palimpsest, where instead of burning that one, they erased it and then rewrote on it, and, you know, and then wrote, wrote the Uthmanic version over top of it. Mm -hmm. But using using uh using some important tools you can actually read what was originally written and then that's how we get the sana palimpsest which uh gives a significant it's not it's not different in terms of theology and so on but there there are tons of textual variants uh over here you'll see a missing verse over here you'll see an extra verse and so on and the, the chapters are arranged differently and so on and so what that does is if it's pre-Uthmanic, if that's the explanation for why that's different, then that gives us a glimpse into the kinds of differences that existed before Uthman burned everything and then standardized the Quran. And then you look at what Farid is saying. Farid is saying, you can't go to that because it differs from the later standardized version and all the all the examples we have of that. It's like, I, I, I really, I really don't get it. It's like if I came up with it, if I came in with a with a Bible. Let, let, suppose I take a copy of the, the Greek Bible right now, of the Greek uh, New Testament, and I were powerful enough to burn every other copy in the world. Well, guess what? There would be no variants anymore. There would be zero mm -hmm. textual variants. I, I, would have, I would have the one official copy, and then I make everyone use my official copy. Um, is, is that what you mean by perfect preservation? Do you mean by destroying all evidence? That's what you mean by perfect preservation? I've just destroyed all the evidence? So anyway, you... The issue gets brought to Uthman specifically because, hey, people are people are using different Qurans and they're quoting, they're using different recitations and so on. What are we going to do about this? Well, the solution is let's burn it all, burn it all, and issue an authoritative version. Well, then we come up with the Sana Men, with the Sana Palimpsest, and it gives us an example of what things were like before Uthman standardized it. And Farid is, uh, just ignore that. Like, wait, that's the one thing we have to go on before before Uthman standardizes everything. It's the one thing we have to go on. And we see tons and tons of variants in it. So I think as, as far as I remember, uh, Farid doesn't even believe that the Sana manuscript is an actual um, is, an, is an actual manuscript of an actual um, complete Quran. He thinks um, so he doesn't think it, it is a Mus'haf. He thinks that the Sana manuscript might just be fragments of a student's notes about the no Quran. no 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 someone brought that up to him and he said he doesn't think so really yeah yeah, yeah. matter of fact we can we, we yeah we can play it real quick because okay. uh, someone someone brings that up to him and it, that that has been suggested that he 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 names the he names the person who suggested it but i i've i've read that too um uh -huh. uh, let's see what he says right the here. Not, the manuscript is something that conflicts with hundreds 
of uh, Quranic manuscripts. That's the first one. That's the first thing. Uh huh. There's yeah, because all the others are based on the one after you burned everything. No reason to rely on it. Um, it has major issues like uh, random, like dropped words from verses. Um, in places that don't make sense, it has grammatical issues. Uh -huh. The Salah the, the manuscript is filled so, so that's with what, issues. That's what copies. That's what at least at least some copies of the Quran look like before Uthman uh, burned it all. And I, I even have a video on it. Um, if you go to my, um, let me see, is it is it even? We fast uh, forward through sure this because available. he's looking for his video. Um. So one, you can't rely on the Sana'a Palimpsest because it conflicts with all the other uh, Masahif. Uh, by the way, this is amazing. You can't rely on this because <laughs> it conflicts with the, all the later ones. It's the, <laughs> it's the earliest one we have, but you can't rely on it because it conflicts with... that. that it, remi it reminds me of like, uh, uh, you can't trust Ibn Asak because it conflicts with Bukhar. It's like, wait... Ibn Asak was before, was before Bukhari. Yeah. Um, it's the only, by the way, in the whole world, it's the only non-Uthmanic um, manuscript. And yeah, because you burned the... Now, to, to, to be fair, there were apparently for a time, you did have the competing uh, versions of the Quran in terms of uh, Ubay's and um, uh, Ibn Masud's. You had those Qurans apparently circulating for a while because they... they, they there was a Kitab al-Masahif, which uh, explained the differences and so on, but they eventually faded out of use and we don't even have them anymore. It has a lot of issues, uh, grammatical issues, words that are dropped, I think even like verses that are dropped. Um, however, however, the Sana'at Palimpsest actually affirms um, the history uh, of what we have off the Quran um, because it had preserved some classical recitations that you find being attributed to like Ubay bin Ka'b, Ibn Mas'ud, um, and whomever. So it had preserved some recitations that are attributed to some companions, um, which affirms what we've been saying, that the Quran has been revealed in seven ahruf, in seven modes. Okay? So th this is amazing. He's... Guys, do you, do you have any idea how, how bad this is? He's saying... We can we can explain the Sanaa manuscript in terms of the differences in terms of the different uh, roof and so on. Now, I, I guess he's correct if he's only referring to parts. But again, you have you have again you go over here and it's a missing verse. Is that a different dialect? Is that a different uh, is that a different harf? What, what what are you saying that is? Uh, or, or if you go over here and, and there's an extra verse, what is that? I, I mean, like what what do you need? What do you need? to get across in order to realize it's just not a perfect, miraculous process. That's it. That's, st stop thinking in terms of like, all of this must have come from, from God when it's obvious that human beings make mistakes, Fareed. It's pretty straightforward. Human beings make mistakes, especially like it, you can take a book. If this is a, this is a, Ibn Asak right here. If I, if I were to take this and copy it by hand, I would make mistakes. That 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 doesn't. That means nothing. That means nothing. It's just a fact. So I uh, I don't know what to do, man. Let's see. Let's see what he says here. In any case, so it's it's the Sunnah Palimpsest is something that we use to prove our history. It's not something that's used to prove the uh, lack of preservation of the Quran or anything like that. If you believe okay. in perfect preservation, it certainly is. In fact, uh, in fact, it destroys even the claim that this is all just different. Uh, so, so this is another theory. It's a palimpsest too. So what on earth is the idea talking about changes when it's a palimpsest? Just like a student's note. That, that's a theory. There's a theory that says that like um, it was actually like a student's notebook um, because like after right before Bara'a, it says um, don't write Bismillah. Right. So that's that's one uh, way of. of looking at it. I'm not sure I agree. I don't think I agree, actually. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, any, uh, I do believe it's an intentional text. However, it's it's a flimsy text. It's filled with mistakes. And you can't say, oh, all the Masahif in the world are mistaken. We're going to reject everything. Sun'at came first. Sun'at's correct. That, that, that's, you're, you're being silly if you say that. 
Yeah. Why can't Why can't we just accept the theory that uh, that that a lot of Qurans were around? Um, a lot of them were sloppily written, and uh, they weren't good. They weren't perfect. They had a lot of mistakes in them. They had a lot of problems with them. But um, at some point, the authorities, let's say Uthman, came together and uh, actually corrected the Quran and created one that is that is free from those very obvious, very sloppy mistakes, which is why the Quran that you have today seems to make more sense compared to those that were not refined. Why is this not a theory? <laughs> yeah, and guys, um, th th think, think about this realistically and like how things would have happened even according to Islam. Uh, we read in the Muslim sources that Muhammad is revealing this over a period of, you know, 22, 23 years or whatever. Um, He's revealing these passages of the Quran in response to various situations that arise. And his followers are memorizing parts. They would memorize the parts that are relevant to, to them. And parts of it are being written down, but, you know, they don't even have very good paper there. So they're writing on bones and flat rocks and leaves and so on. They're writing on anything they can get their hands on. These are not meant to be a book. This is meant to be, these are aids to memory. So you've got a leaf and you can go back to your, your place and that will help you memorize the Quran and so on. And so, and, and you, you know, then Muhammad dies and people who have these parts of the Quran start dying in battle. Uh, Abu Bakr says, let's go ahead and, and come out with, with a copy so we don't lose any more. But that's not, that copy isn't circulated as some book that everyone's supposed to read. That's just a book sitting in Abu Bakr's house mm -hmm. to, to preserve the Quran from any more of it being lost. But notice, other people, because you're getting more people joining the Muslim community, you're getting the Muslim empire, it's expanding and so on. And so people are converting to Islam and they're, they're, uh, they want to learn the Quran. They need aids to memory too, right? So people start writing it down and putting out their different versions. Now, if you spent years of your life hearing various revelations from this guy and you sit down and say, let me write down everything I can remember, and then another guy does the same thing, and another guy does the same thing. Are these things going to match up perfectly? No. You're going to end up with some different looking Qurans. They would have the same theology and a lot of overlap, but there would definitely, definitely, definitely be differences. So that's what's circulating these different, these different versions of the Quran that people are just writing down. And then you get to the time of Uthman, and it's, Uthman, we got a problem here. Now people have different written versions of the Quran. And Uthman says, tell everyone to hand over what they got. We're going to burn them all. We're going to put out an official version. That's what he does. Eventually, we find the Sanaa Palimpsest, and there are tons and tons of differences. What's that, what's that mean? Well, it's just that gives you a glimpse into what was happening when people were trying to write down their own versions of the Quran. And so... What this doesn't tell you that the, the Quran hasn't been well preserved or anything, but th this absolute insane, idiotic nonsense about perfect preservation, letter for letter, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. And yet it's still it's still the the standard view that I hear from Muslims pretty much every day. Weird. Any final thoughts, AP? Uh, the standard narrative has holes in it. The standard narrative has holes in it and so cool. cats out of the bag there that was uh notice you had yasser Qadi, perfect preservation right down to the letter from the time of uthman uh, but behind the scenes he's acknowledging this doesn't work this is just what we tell to uh to muslims at the popular level eventually gets called out for it for the things he's saying behind the scenes muhammad hijab tries to clean up the mess by allowing yasser Qadi to explain himself because Muhammad Ajab actually thought <coughs> that Yasser Qadi is going to have some explanation in terms of Kirat and Afruf, and Yasser Qadi's, I, I, I can't explain this stuff. I can't do it. <laughs> but Fareed really thinks you can. So again, Fareed, you can join us anytime to uh, explain the different versions of the Quran in terms of uh, variants that somehow all go back to Muhammad. And we would be happy to uh, agree with you if you can make a good case. I don't think you'll be able to. You're free to prove me wrong. If you choose not to, do not say that we're the ones who are running. Also, I would like to add, um, if Farid ever wants to actually come and join our, um, our, our streams, join us for a conversation, I will be very happy to, during our entire conversation, abstain from any kind of... Um, 
disrespect toward or disrespectful words and actions toward his uh, his prophet and his beliefs as much as possible. Yeah. yeah so you heard it. You heard it there. In fact, Farid, if you don't join us, we're going to desecrate a thousand Qurans. <laughs> no, just, yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you just you just heard it from AP. Um, and and we're we're generally like that in discussions. We don't we only dial it up when other people when other people dial it up. So I don't know what the excuse would be. You can't say you're you're not trying to uh, publicize our claims. You do it all the time on your channel. So I, I don't know what the objection would be. But uh, Farid, I think you've I think you've just absorbed some silly claim of other people that you shouldn't inter interact with with critics or something like that. Um, if you I mean we're giving you. We're giving you the opportunity to refute us on this. Okay. Uh, I, I do not fully understand. I do not fully understand the argument based on uh, Ruf and Kirat as, 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 as it's meant to explain the variance. I don't think it works. If you can explain that, it, if you can show how it works, happy to, happy to learn that. All Inshallah. right. Inshallah. All right, everyone. So uh, anyway, uh, Sneeko thinks there's one Quran. Uh, every educated Muslim knows that's a complete lie. So the question arises, why do they keep saying it? Find out in the next episode. Find out in the next sense-shattering episode of Dawa Wars, where everyone who disagrees with Fareed is a copper. Yep. yep. And stay away from Islam. <laughs>